All right, good morning, everyone. Um, without further ado, uh, I will uh, go ahead and take the helm and start with um, our very first uh, talk. So uh, I gave a variation of this talk last year, so if any of you who were here last year and have a very good memory, I apologize, but there will be a couple of updates on this talk. Um, I have no disclosures. Uh, so I will be discussing uh, the history of uh, minimally invasive spine surgery and uh, where we are in its current state. Uh, so what exactly are the goals of spine surgery? Uh, well, mainly it's, to, uh, it's twofold. One is you want to decompress neural elements, so whether that be the spinal cord or nerve roots, and thereby prevent neurologic decline. Um, and you also want to maximize potential for neurologic recovery, should they have any neurologic deficit on presentation. Additionally, you want to stabilize the spine in cases of any clinical or subclinical instability to prevent any neurologic deterioration and hopefully prevent pain control. Now, traditional open spinal surgery techniques have required a large incision, exposure of uh, various bony elements of the spine, uh, thereby providing landmarks, anatomic landmarks for the surgeon to use, but it requires a lot of muscle retraction, and you're stripping the muscles off in midline structures. You're also disrupting the periosteal blood supply to these muscles, leading to atrophy and likely more pain long term. Uh, this is a slide, uh, and borrowed the concept of the slide from uh, Dr. Mike Wang down in Miami. So the reason we move forward with spine surgery is the hope that we can decrease the patient's pain level from the preoperative state to the postoperative state. Unfortunately, that often requires a significant uh, hurdle to clear in terms of the perioperative pain state. So we want to see, can we actually decrease the height of this hurdle and decrease the amount of pain that patients experience in the uh, immediate post-op state? And that's how we uh, proceeded with developing minimally invasive spine surgery. So the principles of minimally invasive spine surgery include smaller incisions um, that are made possible by percutaneous methods using fluoroscopic or CT guidance, and it results in decreased muscle retraction. Um, so instead of having one large midline incision with bilateral exposure, you can use unilateral exposure through tubular retractors and still be able to accomplish a bilateral decompression. And we're, the goal is to really achieve the same objectives as open surgery, which is decompressing the neural elements and stabilizing the spine. Uh, this is just a pictographic representation of what the difference is between open and minimally invasive surgery. So here you have a laminectomy that's done through a traditional open approach. A lot of these muscles are stripped off of the midline structures, and a lot of retraction, whereas here through a tubular retractor and unilateral exposure, you can still accomplish the same goals. So what are some minimally invasive decompressive surgeries? Well, the standard surgeries that we often do are 